And a happy Saturday afternoon to you and yours. Alongside Andrew Gribble, I'm Jason Gibbs. This is the best podcast available. We have a 53-man roster. It is a fluid 53-man roster, but Gribbs, we do have indeed a 53-man roster after 14 on-field practices getting us ready for one week from tomorrow in Baltimore a 53-man roster, and Andrew Barry and company, along with Kevin Stefanski, in sync with Kevin Stefanski, have come to a 53-man roster consensus. We have a football team. It is time to play football. Yeah, and it's exciting. And I think when, you know, going through these names and, and kind of just breaking it down position by position, it's, you know, we do a lot of talking about kind of who's in, who's out, and everything like that. But when you look at it just from afar, not not too many surprises. I would say that this – I wouldn't say chalk going with that, but it's, it's you know, not a lot of headlines made out of, out of this uh, cut down to 53. And I think if you'd shown us this uh, maybe a month ago, the, the surprises would be the guys who weren't on the team, on the team a month ago. Outside of that, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty much what we anticipated uh, going into kind of this weird training camp. 53 players, 33 returning. The remaining 20 came to us via the following ways. 11 through free agency, six through the draft, two via trade, and one via waivers. No undrafted rookies making it. And we said it would be a long shot. It was going to be a very challenging year for undrafted rookies to make the squad. And on the initial 53, there are none. Yeah, and I would expect, I mean, we'll get the news on Sunday about the practice squad. I mean, I imagine that some of those guys will, will land spots there and uh, find a way to develop and potentially be groomed into uh, players that, are, that have roles on this team moving forward. And again, again, you can protect four of those practice squad players as well. So uh, some, some players that you can maybe lock onto and, and really develop behind the scenes. But it was a tall order uh, for these guys. I mean, it was just, it's, it's, it's a tall order in normal times. This was incredibly difficult, especially the, I think they were the biggest victims of no preseason games, because I think that's where these guys really show out and, and have an ability to almost play their way onto the roster. Give, give, give the coaches and GMs reasons to be like, how could you get rid of this guy after he did that? And there's just not the same opportunities on the practice field. I mean, a, a guy like, say, this is an extreme example, but Kevin Davidson. I mean, it's, it's a fourth string quarterback that's it's incredibly tough as is, but you're, you're limited in the amount you can practice, the amount of reps you can get. You got to get the starters ready in this weird season. You got to get the backups ready. There just wasn't these same opportunities. And even for some of these bigger named undrafted free agents like, like AJ Green and at corner, it's just a tall, tall order. And when you look at the who, the corners that made it over them, you're like, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, 14 practices. You're not getting a lot of reps. You're gonna do. They're gonna do what they can, uh, the coaching staff, so they can see as much as they can. But it really became an evaluation. And Kevin Stefanski said it best after Friday's walkthrough. Maybe a little bit of a practice at First Energy Stadium, uh, but he said it. Yeah, people were being judged this year from the moment they walked in the door. It wasn't just what they did on the field. They were being judged 24-7 from how they reacted and how they handled all the situations that were thrown at them. So a much different type of evaluation, and that's how we get to this 53-man roster. Yeah, you know, it just a total – you know, the, the thing that stuck, stood out to me when I talked to Andrew Berry today was – you know, despite all these different variables, different circumstances, different issues, he said to him, it wasn't much different than normal years. I guess they just really focused the on those 14 practices and, and evaluated truly every single rep that was taken on the field. And, you know, the tough, the, the tough thing he did acknowledge, though, is, you know, a two-week injury might not hurt you in a normal training camp. You might be out for a couple weeks. You can get back on the field for a couple preseason games. A two-week injury during this time, I mean, that was it. I mean, that was really tough to overcome. And, you know, you look at a player like Damian Ratley, who missed a lot of time uh, on the field. But then you, they also had to consider other players. Kevin Johnson missed a couple weeks, but he imp really impressed in those couple days. MJ Stewart missed a lot of time. He really he really impressed and, and made you realize you had to keep him on this roster. So uh, just a lot, uh, a lot of variables to consider, but you always – 
go down to what you see on tape, and I think that's how they evaluated this. Yeah, again, the, the Browns waving a large number of players, as every team around the league is currently doing. The Browns getting their list in two hours before the deadline. Didn't have to wait till 4 o'clock on a Saturday. Uh, on the offensive side, you mentioned Damian Ratley being let go. Uh, Taewon Taylor, uh, the wide receiver, being let go. Willie Wright at guard. Michael Dunn at guard. Uh, so both backup guards basically being let go. Um, the biggest surprise maybe at running back with Dontrell Hilliard. Uh, but with Kareem Hunt available for the entire season, do you need four running backs? And last year you need, you did, uh, this year you really only need three and a fullback and Dontrell Hilliard, the odd man out here in Cleveland. Yeah. And I think to spin this the other way, I mean, Dearness Johnson had an incredible camp. And I think that was the, the big decider, in that, and then and there's a couple other things you can look at. I mean, you mentioned Kareem Hunt's there. Andy Janovich, uh, the fullback, is around, and also the you, you've you've upgraded your options at at on the in the return game, which is where where Dontrell uh, made an impact last year. So, uh, some tough decisions, and you know we'll we'll see in the coming days if if he'll be back uh, on the practice squad or not. But an experienced player that's played some good football hits the waivers, and and maybe he maybe he gets claimed somewhere. Yeah, I, I would think a guy – I mean, they just brought in Brady Aiello <laughs> the other day, and uh, he was one of the cuts, and one would have to think maybe he could be a candidate for a practice squad. Can Damian Ratley be a practice squad player? Yeah, he can. They've really loosened the rules, the rules on, on these practice squads, and, and I think you have spots on the roster where it doesn't matter how many seasons these players have accrued. So I think you're, you're, you're good on that part. Garrett Gilbert released uh, along with Kevin Davidson. So right now the Browns with just two quarterbacks. One would think they might go after a third quarterback for that practice squad as well. Yeah. And that's, it's, it'll be interesting to see what the numbers break down with league wide on this one, because it, it'll be interesting to see if any of these quarterbacks get claimed because that's, that's a quick uh, digestion of a brand new system you're going to have to have. And then you're, you're going to have to be ready to go in a moment's notice in the event of, of, some some COVID situations. So I think that uh, you would think at least one of those guys gets on the practice squad and it'll, it'll be interesting to see how each team does it. I already saw the, I've, I've already seen a couple teams going with three Browns right now going with two on the active. Yeah. It, it uh, a lot still to come here on this Labor Day weekend cut down day to day, but now everybody's trying to get their guys signed for the practice squad, including those four keepers and obviously get everybody in their building get everybody tested, get everybody into the bubble again, and uh, back on the field in, in preparation for Baltimore. On the defensive side of the football, um, probably the biggest cut at defensive end, Chad Thomas is out. Porter Gustin is in. Linebacker-wise, Willie Harvey, a guy that was brought in last year that uh, struggled with some injuries, uh, gets let go. Uh, Corner-wise, A.J. Green, the high-profile uh, – for undrafted rookie that was signed by the Browns, let go. Uh, I know your guy, uh, a guy that both of us uh, liked, thanks to you selling me on him. Donovan Alumba gets let go. But uh, some of these guys definitely candidates to be back with the football team prize sooner rather than later. Yeah, and it, it was just tough decisions. And I think Alumba and Green got a lot of opportunities. And they, they, had a, a, they got to play a bunch because you had a ton of injuries, but – you know, those injuries were to players that you knew are going to be with you. I think you go with Greedy Williams, who was out for uh, – he's been about for about the last week and a half. Uh, Terrence Mitchell missed some time, but he, he was playing well, and you want to keep a veteran in there. Kevin Johnson, MJ Stewart, both looked really good in the slot, and that slot corner position is necessary. And I think for, for Alumba and Green, I just wonder – it's just tough because the, the, those guys are good outside corners. And I, I think that if the opportunities were there in the slot, but, but they, those guys were outside corners and that's where the Browns had a lot of depth. And so it was going to be tough to crack that, that, that grouping of outside corners. And it just wasn't there at this time. But again, two players that were super impressive. Uh, we'll see if either of them get claimed and, and wouldn't be surprising to see either of them uh, on the practice squad. All right, so let's take a look at our 53-man roster. That was a look at who was let go, the bigger names that were let go. Um, the 53-man roster looks like this. We mentioned it. Two quarterbacks, Baker Mayfield, Case Keenum. Your running backs are Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, Dearness Johnson, 
and your fullback is Andy Janovich. Five tight ends, Gribbs, uh, for now. Yeah. Five tight ends. Again, it's a 53-man roster. Things are always fluid. But uh, Pharaoh Brown, Harrison Bryant, Stephen Carlson, Austin Hooper, and David Njoku all make the original 53-man roster. I mean, if there were going to be a team in the league with five tight ends, it's going to be the Browns. I mean, I think with, with what we've seen at practice, I think these guys all played really well. And I think of that group, I mean, clearly we've talked a lot about Harrison Bryant and how uh, good he's been. I would say the most improved, to me at least, has been Farrell Brown. I mean, he just yes. looks like he's moving better. Uh, he's caught passes. He's not just a blocker, but clearly he is the he's the muscle in that in that in that uh, position group. And I, I think Stephen Carlson played good football at the end of last year. He's kept it up this year. Uh, just a lot of options, and I, I just think this team is going to roll with two tight tight ends the majority of the time. And then then we might see you know, a lot of, a lot of three tight ends and then just having your options and and, and availability. And I I think this is the example of players playing their way onto the 53, because I don't think you went into training camp saying this team's going to have five tight ends. I I think that's just the way it worked out for now. Yeah. Well, I mean, and Kevin Stefanski, I I know sat down with you earlier today uh, when everything was coming down and uh, some of the stuff that, that he said, it was a true collaboration, you know, and Andrew Barry, saying, all right, coach, what kind of offense we're running? All right, we're running a wide zone scheme. Let's figure out the players that fit best. And Stefanski said it. Like, those five, and you just mentioned it, played their way onto this 53-man roster. Yeah, I mean, it's just they, they were good. And, I mean, if you, I didn't chart completions at, at practice, but it, it wouldn't be crazy to say that the tight ends caught, them, caught the more passes maybe than, than wide receivers. I mean, these guys were just active, and they were getting open. Uh, and, and they were just making the plays when they were there. You just didn't see a lot of drops. You didn't see a lot of issues. And then I think for those, those two guys that maybe were on the, the fringe, Farrow and Steven Carlson, they took advantage when Njoku missed time with the wrist injury, and you're not going to get rid of Njoku. So it, it's, it, was, it was a matter of making the most of your opportunities and, and finding a way to play to your strengths, which for this team, running backs, tight ends, wide receiver, you're, you're chock full. Nine offensive linemen. Welcome to a fifth of your football team, basically. Nine offensive linemen, Joel Batonio, Jack Conklin, uh, Chris Hubbard, Nick Harris, Evan Brown, Kendall Lamb, Wyatt Teller, J.C. Treader, and Jedrick Wills all make the squad. Uh, a pretty deep offensive line room all of a sudden here in Cleveland. Yeah, you got. You don't usually see this, but you've got two tr- really uh, traditional backup tackles on this team, and I, so that, that shores you up there. And the thing I like is both Evan Brown and Nick Harris and J.C. Treader can all play center. So you've got three guys that can snap the ball on your active roster. And then Wyatt Teller and, and Batonio are your true guards. But I think Nick Harris and Evan Brown can also play guard. So you've got – you essentially have four guards, three centers within about a four-player kind of grouping there. Yeah, and that's why Willie Wright and Michael Dunn became expendable. And we might see them back on the practice squad here before it's all said and done because they did show a little bit uh, last Sunday at First Energy Stadium. We've seen a little bit from them, and I wouldn't be surprised to see one or both of them end up on the practice squad. Yeah, I had a feeling yesterday watching that practice that Evan Brown had a spot when he – Batonia got the day off, so Brown was out there with the first-team offense at left guard, and then he goes out there with the second-team offense at center. So it was just – I mean, that that – it's the more you can do. And I think he was seen as maybe the, one of the more versatile options that the Browns have had. And I think that that center and, and guard importance came into focus because, uh, you know, uh, Nick Harris spent all of his time at center the, during this training camp. There weren't, weren't many guard reps out there. So you needed that, that additional guard. On the defensive side, let's go to the defensive lineman. Eight making the roster, including Anku, Claiborne, Elliott, Garrett, Porter Gustin, as we mentioned already, Larry Ogunjobi, Sheldon Richardson, Olivier Vernon. Pretty stacked defensive line room here in 2020, as opposed to last year where the starters were the names, but the backups, not so great. Yeah. <laughs> it was, so you go into camp losing Andrew Billings. So you're down one than, than what you thought. 
But then you, you had a great start, a great camp from Port Augustine. And I think the guy that Chris Kiffin couldn't talk about enough was Yulianku and Jordan Elliott. So you feel good about your backups at defensive tackle. This is the best looking we've seen in Sheldon Richardson uh, at that spot. And, and your ends right now are healthy with Miles and Olivia. So it looks great on paper. You just got to keep them healthy and, 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 and max, make, make sure you don't have to tap into more of that depth. Because right now where your depth stands, it's good. And I think entering last season, it was good. But then once you lose that first line, then, then it, it gets, gets tricky beyond, beyond your group of eight. Is there a spot on this team somewhere, whether it's practice squad or eventually a 53 for Daniel Aquale, you think? You know, I think potentially because he's, again, uh, it was a tough odd man out. And this is a guy that had a great camp last year, then got hurt. And I thought he was solid again this year. He's, he's, he's proven he can play. I just think that he had Elliot and, and Anku there behind two, two starters. And it, it was just tough to, to make the math work because you went with pretty standard amounts at both linebacker and defensive back as well. So you really just didn't have too much room there. Yeah, I, I think uh, he definitely didn't do anything to lose the spot. He just didn't ultimately beat out any of the other guys, namely Port Augustine, for the job. So, um, but I, I definitely think there's talent there, and there there's a place somewhere hopefully for him on this football team. At the linebacker room, six linebackers: Tay Davis, B.J. Goodson, Jacob Phillips, Malcolm Smith, Sione Takitaki, and Mac Wilson. You've got to keep on the 53-man roster for right now because you've got to figure out if if he's on pup not pup what what that looks like from an injury standpoint yeah it's interesting because you've got those a, a couple new injured reserve rules as well that where he you, you can go on there for a shorter amount of time and that that might tell us how how severe this injury is we we clearly know it, it or at least we think it's not anything that's going to jeopardize the entire season uh so it's it's just a matter of the you get more flexibility once the rosters go down to 53 you couldn't put him on injured reserve uh, before this if he did he's out for the season so uh, that that could be among the maneuvers you see in the coming days uh, we'll just have to wait and see the best case would be no maneuver at all ready to go uh, one of these weeks uh, without having to, to lock him into anything on that roster uh, and, and that I think could be a position to watch you know if, if Andrew Barry and company are scouring the the waiver wire uh, based on cuts is that a position of need that they go and try to fill. Yeah, we'll see. And it's one of those where I, I mean, I don't even know if I know the starters right now uh, for week one. I, I, right. think, I think I have an idea. I don't know if how it's going to break down snap wise. It wouldn't surprise me if you see more of a rotation than, than just three guys locked in. I mean, that, that's the one group I truly don't have too much of a read on. I mean, I think Sione Takitaki Taki and Goodson are going to have big roles. I would imagine Jacob Phillips uh, could be among your top options if Mac can't go and then Tay Davis is someone we've also seen in that spot. So we'll, we'll get a better feel for this linebacker room eight days from now than I truly have right now. Cause I think it's pretty open. I, I don't know what role Malcolm Smith's going to have in this group. It's just, it, it's, it's wide open at this point. I, I, I don't know if we've seen as too much of a resolution from a depth chart standpoint. Yeah. I think we can agree. Jacob Phillips has started to show he's, he's learning more. He, he seems to be picking things up, but I still think he's a little ways away from being plugged in as the starter. I could be totally wrong one week from tomorrow when we're in Baltimore. Yeah, it's just it's it's one of those where it could be matchup specific as well. I mean, how you how you how you line up, and I mean, we don't even know is this going to be a team that plays a lot of three linebackers? Is it going to be a team that plays a lot of two linebackers? And who are those guys? So this is one of those where you get but that. This is one where if we'd seen some preseason games, might have a better idea, but. Yep. Right now, it's, it's, it's anyone's guess at this point. All right, defensive backs. Between corners and safeties, can I interest you in 10? So between defensive backs and offensive linemen, 19 of our 53 guys coming from those positions. 10 guys, including uh, Ronnie Harrison, who we just acquired from Jacksonville. Kevin Johnson is on that list. Carl Joseph, Terrence Mitchell. Sheldrick Redwine, Andrew Sandejo, MJ Stewart, despite being laid up a little bit with that, with that leg is making the 53-man roster. Tavi or Thomas, Denzel Ward, Greedy Williams. And Tavi or Thomas looked good at the corner spot, but he is a special teams guru. And I think that's why he ends up on this roster. 
Yeah, and I think that the big number was almost necessary. And it wouldn't have even surprised me if they had they'd gone with 11 for this group because you've got to consider that you've got some lingering injuries where you don't know for sure if these guys are going to be back uh, for week one. And then you also throw in, I mean, you don't know how ready Ronnie Harrison is going to be for week one. Uh, he's still going through the testing protocols, can't get in your building uh, yet. So you're going to be rolling with a smaller number uh, at that spot potentially in Baltimore. And I, I think that, like you mentioned, Tavier has played well in the slot in camp, but you don't know if you if you if you're even going to have him playing uh, as a DB in that game against the Ravens. So that again, that's one less. So uh, another position where uh, you had ten could have gone even higher, and we'll see what happens with the practice squad, what happens with waiver claims, just to get you in position week one where you feel comfortable you have enough guys. Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, we we don't know what Kevin Johnson's. I mean, it could be a surprise and could be active next week. I don't think so, but you never know. Uh, we really don't know what Greedy Williams last night at First Energy Stadium. He was not dressed. Now, again, the first team really didn't do much uh, of anything other than uh, a glorified walkthrough, but no Greedy Williams still. And the question is, is that shoulder going to be ready for week one in Baltimore? Yeah. And I think you feel good with Terrence Mitchell in that role. If, if that's the case, it's just, I, I, I just don't know what, what's going on in the slot because that, yeah. that's where you've got your two guys banged up and, and then you've got Tavier. So Tavier would be the guy I think today uh, based on what we've seen, but uh, there's still eight days and those guys can get healthy in a hurry. I think. Well, and again, I, I can see the Browns maybe going after it and bringing back AJ green uh, the Donovan Alumba of the world, uh, Moffitt, maybe it's safety or, or Benton just to, as a development type role. But I don't know if they're week one plug and plays. Yeah. It's, so. It'll be interesting. I mean, it's, it's just, that's the one where maybe we'll get some more clarity. I think probably Wednesday when you get your first injury report and you see how much these guys are actually practicing, that's going to give you maybe the real clarity on, 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 on what's going on week one. Your specialist are Gillen, Hewlett, Seibert. Back to the one position on offense I didn't get to just because I've got about five pieces of paper in front of me and I'm going through things. The wide receiver room. Yeah. <laughs> we kept six. Kind of a big deal, Gibbs. You might want to touch on that. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr., uh, Jarvis Landry, Kaderil Hodge makes it. Obviously also uh, a special teamer there. Rashard Higgins has made the 53-man roster. Donovan Peoples-Jones, our sixth-round pick. And JoJo Natson. congratulations to JoJo, right now on the 53-man roster. Yeah, and I think we've seen it, and they've talked about it, more than just a returner in the eyes of this team, I think. And I think he's, he's played well when given the opportunity in offense. And this, to me, indicates, we'll see, I would peg him as the, the front runner at, in at least one of the returning roles. Uh, we haven't gotten the depth chart yet, but – you know, I think he's he's shown enough, and I've heard Mike Prefer talk about him enough to think that this guy's probably got the best shot. But you've also got some other options with both Dearness Johnson and, and Donovan Peoples-Jones both on the roster. Yeah. I imagine I imagine DPJ is going to be on special teams even if he's not returning. I, I imagine right. they're going to find a role for him because he, he's got the body type and the athleticism that you want to see. Well, and he's one of those guys, especially on punt returns, you better know where he is on the football field. Yeah. So he's, he's dangerous and he, he's electric with it. Doesn't have a ton of experience returning kicks. So I, I would be more surprised to see him on kicks than, than punts, but uh, we'll, we'll see going forward. But Dearness Johnson has experience with both. I think Dearness was a little bit better on kicks last year. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see from that perspective, but Jojo Nats and that's, that's all he did for the Rams. He was really good at it. So that's why you signed him, but I, I think they've got more in store for him. Yeah, uh, there are the one thing that this team has is a lot of special teams experts uh, from Tavier Thomas, Kaderil Hodge, Jojo Natson, guys that are good, solid players at their position, but they are really good at special teams. Yeah, I'll throw in Tay Davis in that one as well. Yep. I think he's a really good special teams player. And I, I just think five tight ends, those guys are all going to play on special teams. I, I think that uh, the, the, the Browns should be – better in that department I think that's the goal you, you want to be better they, they were much improved last year but I think there's still room to be much better and I think they're, they're poised to do that going back to that wide receiver room it'll be interesting to see who that number three wide receiver is yeah. <laughs> because last night again at First Energy Stadium on Friday Canaryl Hodge trotted out with Odell and Jarvis again 
Now, most of the time you're in a, you're in a two wide receiver set, but uh, if you do go to three, it will be interesting to see who that third wide receiver. Yeah. And I think, I mean, Rashard Higgins has, has, has played that role a lot. Uh, he's got good chemistry with Baker Mayfield and I, I think he's definitely in line uh, for that role. And I think the way the receiver room is built right now, you can protect DPJ a little bit. You don't have to force him out there, get him uh, in some tough spots. You can develop him behind the scenes and get him ready. Cause I think you're pretty, you're, pr you're pretty solid with the group ahead. And I think that wide receiver group, I think presented the, the toughest decisions because, you know, I, it wouldn't have surprised me uh, if, if either Ratley or Taewon Taylor had made this team. Cause I thought they had Ratley when he was out there, it played well, he was just hurt. And then, then Taewon Taylor had had a pretty good camp as well. Yeah. Again, this is the 53 man roster on Saturday afternoon. Uh, and we're taping around 2.30 PM, three o'clock. So uh, a lot of things can happen between now and then, especially as the rest of the league begins to trim down their rosters and they have to have these all trimmed down by 4 PM Eastern time. And then, it's picking up guys, getting guys in here, getting them screened, getting them into the bubble, and getting them working out as soon as possible. It will be interesting as well with 16 uh, practice squad spots, four of whom are essentially keepers. <laughs> so um, it, it, it's, going to, it's going to be interesting to see what positions, what positions to you might this team go after and, and strengthen. Hmm. That's tough. I think I look, I'm looking mostly at the defensive side of the ball. I, I think he, any of those position groups on the defense, especially with week one in mind, it wouldn't surprise me. So I, I'm, I think offense, you're probably okay. Uh, but then again, last year, I, I didn't see the Browns claiming a tight end like they did with Ricky Seals Jones, but they did. Uh, I, I don't think any of the defensive groups would surprise me at this point. I'll just say that. I think that, if there's like an, a, a quality pass rusher out there, that wouldn't surprise me. Uh, linebacker, clearly, and defensive back, just from the perspective of you've got you to get enough guys on the field for week one, like just in, depending on the injuries. So I think those, uh, all three on defense would be the, the guys that I, I wouldn't be surprised, but it wouldn't surprise me if the number was zero. I mean, just because this is a weird year and, and we'll see. And also, you know, this isn't the – the 2017-18 Browns, not number one in the, cl the claim order. So you, you've got to you, – you might think you're getting some players, but someone might be claimed ahead of them. Yeah, definitely a lot to watch here. Uh, and the Browns will be on the practice field on Sunday, something that we have not seen in recent years. Um, I don't remember the last time they did, but they will have a walkthrough on Sunday and, and begin preparations for the Ravens. I say begin. They've been pre preparing for this, but uh, formally with that 53-man roster and then as many of the practice squad guys as they can get back in their building, uh, they will have that done. And we will be on the field tomorrow. And then Monday, you're officially – I would say tomorrow, you're officially into game week, one week out from the game with the Ravens to kick off the 2020 season. Final thoughts, anything else on this 53-man roster, groups? I, I guess I'm just intrigued by tomorrow. I think that's the the one where you, the practice squads mean a lot this year. And I think that they're, they mean a lot, not only because they can be big, but also you have access to elevate a couple of those guys on game days that you didn't have before. There's a lot of new rules that make this practice squad very important. And it'll just be interesting to see what went into some of the thinking. And I don't, the thing I don't know is our team's going to publicly disclose who their protected guys are. I think they have to. Uh, so we'll, we'll see if that's disclosed or not. Can you change it week by week? Like those are, those are the things I, I truly don't know. Cause this is the first time for us, but, uh, the, the, this comes into focus, uh, a lot more this year than any other. Indeed. A lot to, uh, a lot to take in a lot to watch and see what happens. We will continue to be back with you throughout the week and throughout the 2020 season, the BPA not going anywhere. Uh, uh, we got to figure a few things out, but uh, we'll keep it going uh, throughout the 2020 season. For the latest updates, make sure you check out the Brown social media platforms all weekend long. You can also check them out at clevelandbrowns.com for notifications and, of course, updates on the roster as, uh, as they continue to unfold. Thanks to Jeff McDaniel for all of his help. Back to work for Andrew Gribble and I. 
You can like and subscribe today to the best podcast available. Log on to clevelandbrowns.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash browns. For Andrew Gribble, I'm Jason Gibbs. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening to the best podcast available.